Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Wow, what a ride. Who caught the XRP dip? Who bought XRP last night? Okay, I got XRP here on the hourly, and it went as low as 0.169 cents, so hovering just under 17 cents uh, here on this red, long red candlestick lot of negative volume selling pressure and then bounced back up here uh, and back up to 17.7.177 cents right now trading over here. So a big dip for XRP, uh, a big dip for the rest of the crypto space. Uh, let's bring up Bitcoin here. We can see Bitcoin here did indeed dip. Uh, hit this level here that I marked on the chart uh, several weeks ago, but uh, then rebounded back. So did not really breach that level of support, or rather it did briefly, but not enough sellers were selling off. Uh, so it did bounce right back up over the $89,000 level and right now trading at about 9045 This is Bitcoin on the hourly, but guys, when you put it here on the daily, we can see that we are still not out of the woods, okay? Look at this pattern. Still no new higher highs forming on the long term. Uh, so my, my thought is that we're still not out of the woods, of course, and that we could still make lower lows. Guys, what I think is happening is that this is depending a lot on what's going on in the economy. Guys, this is the S&P 500. We got the Dow Jones Industrial Average here, and these charts are looking fairly similar. Uh, we're not seeing, obviously, it's the weekend right now. We're not seeing, well, I mean, obviously, it's Sunday today, so the market isn't open. But uh, doesn't look too positive to me. We'll see what happens on Monday when the market's open. I have a feeling that cryptocurrency is indeed uh, taking a hint from these markets. Although they're not uh, moving in tandem, they still are uh, taking cues, I think, from the traditional stock market because we still are living with a pandemic. And so economic activity is still very uncertain at this time. And Panos Mac here uh, posted this from his Coil blog. Here's a poll. The average buy price for XRP hodlers is 32 cents. And I believe this was taken from Mazari, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and I guess he opened it up to everybody else, asking them what their cost average for XRP is. Mine, as I've mentioned in the past, is 0 0.307. And uh, with that dip for XRP, did you guys happen to buy more under 18 cents? Uh, let me know down in the comments if you did. Some people here, like J Knob, said 44 cents made an impulse buy when the pump to $3 occurred, and it was around $1.90. Very small purchase, but I still cringe when I see that in my transaction history, hoping I can laugh about it in a few years from now. Uh, same with a lot of us. Some people here seeing $0.89, cents, $1.70. Uh, I'm not going to read all the comments, just going to read out the prices here. $0.85, cents, uh, $0.08, cents, says Hodel ISA. Uh, 17 cents, 17 cents. XRP set us free actually mentions that uh, this is an average of 400 people that actually knew uh, about this particular hodlers Facebook group. Uh, and so the uh, sample size is actually quite small. Uh, but, you know, some people here just chiming in 11 cents, 22 cents. One person down here, I believe, said that their cost average uh, was something like eight or seven or eight cents because they had actually been holding XRP since 2015 or 2016. That would be an ideal price. To be hodling XRP is the lowest we've seen it go in the last few years uh, was actually after that dip during the pandemic. So about, uh, what was it, 14? No, 11. 11 cents? 11 cents, I believe, was the lowest. 11.4, 0.114 uh, over here on the chart. The lowest we've seen XRP in a while. Nevertheless, let me bring it over here to Twitter. We got Matthew Liny and Ripple partner Worldline working on a decentralized social media platform to rival Facebook and Instagram with the EU and to secure data and development of value creating strategies. This is what we need. An alternative to these big major conglomerates, these companies that we're willfully giving our information to, uh, and of course they're selling it to advertisers, all this, but this is Helios redefining the future of social networks through the development of a platform for the creation of decentralized apps and services. And uh, Worldline guys is a partner of Ripple. Looks like their start date here was January 1st, 2019 and their end date December 31st, 2022. Uh, they're in the process of doing this. Uh, Matthew also posted a few other things in this thread. Out of the 15 partners, including world-renowned universities and research centers who have been invited to take part in the development of Helios, Worldline is the only representative of the payments and transactional services sector. He's got a few more screen grabs uh, to that effect here. Uh, again, guys, I link everything in the description of the video. So if you want to read uh, some of those screen grabs, you certainly can. The project will be decentralized and monetized and blockchain will be involved. 
Worldline is partners with Ripple, if you guys did not hear it the first time. So the project focuses on development of a blockchain-based decentralized and secure social media platform that will allow developers to create easy to apply social networking features that reduce the cost and complexity of developing a platform. Helios is likely to redefine the future of social networks and become the European alternative to the current global giants of social media. We definitely need an alternative to the social media that currently exists. If you guys do not know by now, my Twitter account got suspended by Twitter uh, for an unknown reason. I still don't know why. I still haven't heard back from them. All I posted was uh, the video that I uh, put out on YouTube that day. So it wasn't even anything controversial, which, uh, you know, a lot of people were coming and asking me, did you post something controversial? You know, your, your Twitter handle is one of the least controversial Twitter handles in the space. And that's what I said. I said, yeah, I try not to post anything uh, too controversial on Twitter because I know their policies can be a little meh, you know, whatever. That's their business. Nevertheless, it got suspended and I still haven't heard back from them. So if you guys aren't following me on Twitter, I uh, my new handle is at WorkingMoneyCH on Twitter. So guys, give me a follow if uh, you like the videos, you want updates, or even if you just want to communicate. I saw this from Massimo here on Twitter. Nasdaq's new platform backed by R3 digital assets, Symbiont, and Microsoft may not be what you think it is. This is huge. So what is it if it's not what we think it is? Uh, last week, the exchange giant NASDAQ announced the launch of its SAAS-based digital asset suite named the Marketplace Services Platform, as the exchange giant is best known for its technology-oriented public stock market exchange. One would be forgiven for jumping to conclusions that the company is getting into the business of operating a virtual currency exchange. While NASDAQ is not launching a virtual currency exchange, it is rolling out a service which will empower companies across a range of digital industries to build new financial instruments that use distributed ledger technology, a version of blockchain technology that more closely meets the needs of financial services. So it's a service to empower companies across a range of industries. And the most important part there, guys, is the DLT using distributed ledger technology. They talk down here about uh, some of their partnerships, including Digital Asset R3, which we know can settle with XRP, and Symbiont, which are all becoming the de facto standard for DLT in financial services. Uh, so very, very interesting news there. Great news. We know DLT, distributed ledger technology, is going to uh, replace a lot of the current technology Technologies. For manual tracking is one thing. Also, DeFi is going to be a big, big game changer in the space. Uh, guys, I will link this Forbes article in the description. Uh, it's fairly lengthy, so I'm not going to read the whole thing out there for you guys. But the point remains, I think, and I think that that's the most important thing we have to take away from this. Distributed ledger technology is a game changer. The companies that are working with the biggest companies in the world, lots of them are partnered with Ripple. XRP right now being focused by Ripple into cross-border transactional businesses. That's where they're putting their focus. Focus, but that's not to say that XRP will not be used for other verticals down the road. As I know, all you guys know that Brad Garlinghouse has mentioned in the past uh, in interviews. So the landscape is clearly changing and we're also seeing that over here. Okay, this from XRP Crypto Wolf. Cryptocurrency and blockchain dominates active trademarks in the US government's database. So active trademarks, this is where companies are looking to put their resources. The most popular blockchain related terms across all active trademarks in the US are blockchain and cryptocurrency, according to the block's recent research findings. The total number of blockchain and cryptocurrency mentions within live trademarks referring to active ones that have not been abandoned were 2,646 and 2,382 respectively. Bitcoin, initial coin offering, and Ethereum all fall below 500 mentions, uh, each as analyzed in the chart above. Uh, we can't see the chart here right now, but uh, the figures are based on the database from the Trademark Electronic Search System created by the United States Patent and Trademark Office. The USPTO database allows viewers to search for all current and previous registered trademarks within its platform to read the full June 2020 report and move such data-driven stories. Subscribe to The Block. Now, The Block wasn't available for whatever reason. It said it was offline, so I found this affiliate site and these things aren't loading. Uh, maybe The Block is having some issues right now. Uh, as this is as this site, I'm assuming, is just taking the feed from their site. Nevertheless, very, very interesting to see this. Blockchain and cryptocurrency mentions for the U.S. Trademarks Department is at an all-time high. Okay, these are active trademarks that many companies in the space are looking to trademark because they realize this is the future 
And if we don't trade market now, we probably will lose our opportunity. So regardless of if you're into XRP or other cryptocurrencies, this just speaks volumes to where this market is going as a whole. Okay, right now we're looking at the crypto space and the market cap is 257.1 billion, give or take. That is nothing, guys. That is nothing, nothing, nothing in comparison to what it could be, what it will be in the future, in the next coming years. And even if you multiply that market cap by 3x or 4x, that's kind of where we were during the last bull run in 2017. Okay, with just spec traders in the space, with uh, no real world utility, we were already seeing the crypto market cap three or four times higher, give or take. We saw XRP go to $3.80 off basically nothing. So you can only imagine what will happen when these companies get these trademarks, obviously start new businesses. The world is going to look very, very different, I think, post-pandemic. We just have to wait. Guys, this from Michael at Val5Links on Twitter. The annual BIS report by Bank of International Settlements has been released, and it says that the beer flu pandemic has accelerated the need to create central bank digital currencies. The report mentions that central banks must realize that the time to move ahead with CBDC projects has come. The beer flu has exposed many new cracks in the traditional financial systems. The BIS report also states that the central banks have an opportunity to speed up CBDC projects and accelerate the digitization efforts substantially. The international banking body has also suggested that many developing countries can accelerate their CBDC projects to tackle conventional local banking challenges. And guys, this put out directly from the bank for International Settlements Twitter account. Uh, so they're not joking around, guys. The time is now. They're pushing central banks to move on it now during this pandemic. They were already in the process of undergoing major changes even before this happened. Now this has occurred. Everything is being shaken up and it only makes sense for central banks to move on this now. So the BIS mentions how the current payment digitization phase will have a significant impact on the upcoming CBDCs. The first few countries to launch their CBDCs will certainly have an edge over others. Presently, many central banks across the globe are developing uh, digital currencies in varying capacities, and some have reached the testing phase. So they're already saying the, the countries that have already started with their CBDC projects are going to have an upper hand. Obviously, they will be able to uh, transact more efficiently with other countries who also have their digital groundwork laid uh, because it's about efficiency. If these countries do not have a CBDC, well, there's always RippleNet to be able to help transact from fiat to CBDC, uh, fiat to crypto, crypto to fiat, whatever you want to do, Ripple is there and XRP obviously there to help source that liquidity. So there's the liquidity side of it, but also just the idea that the CBDCs are what's going to help propel uh, maybe, let's call it maybe a new age of economic development. I think a lot is going to change. I seriously do think that a lot is going to change, um, a lot that we don't even think of, that we can't even comprehend at this moment in time. We were so used to a world before, and the best way I can put it was, remember what the world was like before 9-11? Now think of what the world is like now. It just kind of happened like that, and our lives completely changed and none of us knew it was coming. This article down here also mentions uh, that China is at the forefront of the CBDC revolution. Uh, we heard Chris Larson, I didn't report on this, but I know other YouTubers did. We heard Chris Larson say, you know, the US can't lag behind because other countries like China are already developing these projects. They're already getting deeper into cryptocurrency commitments and investing more money into projects. And the US cannot be left behind. Uh, it would actually be quite a shame if the US doesn't put the foot on the gas at this moment in time. However, things are looking up for real world utility, especially for Ripple and XRP. Guys, this is from Lord XRP at Bit4Coins on Twitter. Seriously, no one in the community knows an exact date for Moon, but a lot of pieces are showing references that we will see price action this year or quarter one, 2021. And this is because XRP is the standard. So he takes some screen grabs here from Ripple's Insights uh, website, Institutional Confidence, in the space and paved the way for greater institutional adoption next year, explains Brianne Madigan. So confidence, Ripple has confidence that they will see more institutional adoption next year. CEO Brad Garlinghouse is even bolder, predicting that half of the top 20 biggest banks in the world will actively hold and trade digital assets in 2020. He is also one of the many 
on the team that believes fiat currencies will go digital in the next year. So some predictions here, unofficial predictions, I'd say that uh, quarter one, 2021 or quarter four, even 2020, we could see some serious adoption and therefore hopefully more demand for some of these cryptocurrencies, which would ultimately bring price action up. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. 40 year old grandpa down here says, me gut says all markets will close down for a week, including crypto exchanges and banks. They'll announce a global financial reset. They'll open back up with XRP bridging everything no warning no time to take positions ahead of time or set sell orders just boom now there's a faction of people that really do think that there could be a close down and that you know will will everything will have been integrated and those who knew before will reap rewards because we'll have had our xrp positions we'll have all been hodling xrp for years at that point and then the demand will come because all these FIs, banks, governments, whoever will need XRP will need it at that point after this transformation. Uh, the price will already be stable, but at a price where some of these bigger institutions can target those bigger uh, transactions and the rest will be history. XRP will be minted in the history books from there on out. It's an interesting theory. It's a very optimistic theory. I'm not saying it's out of the question, but I do think there are still a few more hurdles to get over before we could see that happen. Guys, Mac Attack XRP here on Twitter brought this to my attention. Here's why I believe XRP price is being temporarily suppressed by the owners. And I know uh, this is a controversial topic. It has to do with Jed McCaleb. It can be kind of interesting if you sit back and just think about the ecosystem and think about this particular digital asset vis-a-vis uh, -vis Jed McCaleb, specifically his holdings of XRP, how he left the company, how they had to go to court and actually come to an agreement on how much he can sell at what points. And so let me just read you this blog. So for the last three years, XRP has been on a long downtrend. And while many assume the project is a scam, I disagree. So firstly, let's address that. XRP as a scam. Here is the XRP chart. And you know, there are bull runs. XRP was influenced in the last bull run, obviously went up as high as, you know, $3 and change, depending on what exchange you're talking about there. And from there, it has gone down. We've seen some upticks here and there, but ultimately just gone down further and further, uh, making new lows. So you know, when you're looking at it in isolation, you think to yourself, well, this is, you know, not a great performing cryptocurrency, especially compared to Bitcoin, but you can't treat all cryptocurrencies the same. And there's a lot of people that think, well, you know, I'm just upset because it is not behaving the way I want it to. Then they paint it as a scam, but uh, clearly Crypto Whale disagrees. He goes, my theory for the downward trend is that owners are suppressing the price, owners of XRP are suppressing the price. So guys, let's think Ripple, the people at the helm of Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse, Chris Larson, they're suppressing the price to ensure co-founder Jemma Caleb's selling doesn't have a major impact on future growth. So there's this history here and I'm gonna get into it for those of you guys who don't know it. Jed McCaleb is an American programmer, yada, yada, yada. He co-founded uh, Stellar, uh, left the company Ripple in 2013. On his departure from Ripple, McCaleb announced his intention to sell all of his associated holdings, around 7 billion XRP. This triggered a 40% drop in the crypto's price and brought Ripple to the negotiating table. This is what happened when he left, okay? He said, back in 2013, let's bring it back to 20, uh, this doesn't even go as far back as 2013. So we don't even have any chart activity for that long ago. But what he wanted to do was essentially sell his entire stash. And the guys at Ripple realized, no, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's going to be detrimental for XRP price. And there's going to be too much in the ecosystem. And we had all negotiated that we'd hold some. And, you know, obviously they had their plan in place. Jem McCaleb was going to throw a wrench into that plan. So what they did was they agreed on a seven-year agreement resulting in limiting his monthly and annual sales. Ripple brought the lawsuit against McCaleb in 2016, accusing him of violating. Uh, so McCaleb obviously wanted to sell more. Ripple's like, no, no, no. You're only allowed to sell this much at this time and so they came up with a schedule and according to the sources that tracked his activity McCaleb the former executive sold 1.8 million to 2.7 million XRP a day over 400,000 to 600,000 dollars a day looking at the quarter wise numbers McCaleb sold over 26 million dollars worth of XRP in quarter one of 2020 the largest amount in the last five quarters the highest ever amount of XRP sold by him was in quarter four of 2018 worth over 36 million dollars and you guys can see a chart here uh, 
uh, with the XRP that Jeb McCaleb sold. Down here, they talk about Ripple's response and how uh, David Schwartz joked, thanks to Ripple's refusal, Jed's XRP will probably be worth more than $1 billion. He will probably be the only person to become a self-made billionaire despite his best efforts. That's kind of funny, actually. And Jed McCaleb has, uh, you know, gone on the record and uh, said, you know, I have no uh, intentions to stifle Ripple's plans. I don't know if you guys remember this article from back in February. This is just from a few months ago now. Stellar's Jed McCaleb says his XRP sell-off won't disrupt the crypto market. He said, I have been transparent from the beginning. The market has known for years that I've been selling my XRP at a slow, steady rate. My investment decisions are not based on any desire to negatively impact other companies in the industry. I think the history to date shows that there is no impact on the market and I don't see any reason why that will change. We're all working together, he says, making blockchain a viable transformative industry. I think we can do that more effectively if we're supportive to others in the space. For my part, I'm focusing on growing Stellar, his new company. So this is what he went on the record to say. Uh, interestingly, though, while Ripple posted about the agreement on uh, the company forum in August 2014, Ripple told Cointelegraph that this was replaced by an updated 2016 agreement. This means that McCaleb's seven-year agreement with Ripple won't end until 2023. Okay, let's get back to this blog post. How long will the suppression last? It's unclear exactly how long Jed will sell his coins, although considering the large amount of XRP he holds, he could continue this action for many years to come. Well, in this article, we're assuming it's 2023 as per the seven-year agreement uh, renegotiated in 2016. I believe once the size of his wallet is significantly smaller, Ripple will finally begin its process in acquiring new investors. As of now, any price movement upward will be subjected to Jed selling his XRP, which would in turn bring the price back down. This is the reason why XRP has been dropping over three years. Let's go back to the chart. And, you know, while we're seeing many other cryptos, like, let's just bring up VET as an example, okay? Many other cryptos. Now, this chart, we don't have as much history on this chart as we have with uh, other cryptocurrencies. But, you know, th th this chart is showing VeChain, for example, bouncing back, coming up into resistance levels. And, you know, its volume isn't that much. Obviously, its market cap much smaller than XRP. But even if we bring up Ethereum, Ethereum is looking more like Bitcoin, uh, for example. Let's bring up Bitcoin and we can see the similarities and patterns there from Ethereum, Bitcoin. Let's bring up Litecoin. Okay, we can see similarities and patterns there. But XRP, obviously, that downward channel. And so some are commenting, does this have to do with Jeb McCaleb? And, you know, people are, quite frankly, a little worried about it. Is it a good investment? XRP is a controversial coin, but many claim it's centralized and only aimed to fund its owners. Okay, so they talk about that. Crypto Whale's personal stance is this. I am a fan of it. I wouldn't be writing this article if I didn't see the future growth in this asset. I first got into XRP several years ago when the price was below one cent. So this guy's been in the space for a long time. It's gone up thousands of percent since, and I'm not focused on a few years of red. Reminder, the Dow Jones has been around for over 124 years. And at its start, the index had low volume and the growth was ugly. Now the index is valued at roughly $8.33 trillion. Patience is important. So in conclusion, he does think an ex-owner selling millions does indeed have a big impact on price as much as Jed McCaleb uh, claims that it's not um, as much as, you know, uh, Ripple even is saying, you know, it, it, we have an agreement and uh, I find that they don't really want to talk about it. Uh, so could that be because it is affecting the price? I personally don't know. He's legally only allowed to sell at 1.5% of XRP's daily volume, which might seem minimal, but imagine we went on a bull run, the volume would easily go to number one, giving him the ability to sell huge amounts. The future of XRP investors will be prosperous, but that future doesn't involve Jed McCaleb. This is the final conclusion to this. Once he's no longer in possession of billions of XRP, the company and coin will flourish. That's when I will accumulate large amounts. Interesting perspective here, guys. Now, let's not forget, though, Jed McCaleb was still selling his XRP during this last bull run. When we did see XRP go from 19 cents, give or take, to about $3.34, at least on this exchange. So there is still potential for growth, especially in a spec bull run. But what Crypto Whale is suggesting here is that we will not see any meaningful real-world utility action 
until the Jeb McCaleb sales are over and that isn't until 2023. Now I don't know your plans. If you guys are too impatient to wait until 2023, at least with this theory in mind, I'm not saying that this is true or not true. I'm just putting it out there and giving you a different perspective on XRP utility with regards to price. I still do think that we could see a significant XRP bump in the next bull run. And I know a lot of you guys have accumulated. A lot of you guys have a plan, a cash out plan, maybe not selling all your XRP in the spec market. But thinking about this theory with regards to Jeb McCaleb, does that change your mind? Do put it in the comment section because I always love to hear what you guys think. And guys, I just wanted to end it off with this. Uh, this from Crypto Thane at Crypto Sommelier, who is still holding their 2017 bags. I know I am. And look at how many likes he's gotten on Twitter. But anyway, that's just my opinion. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.